today on an all-new Dr. Phil. They're back. He has destroyed me. Are you serious? You're a pathological liar. You are crazy. And worse than ever. I drank because of you. Another great success story from Dr. Phil. I'm not taking blame for any of this. The drinking, pills, and the men. Is this the part where you listen more and talk less? It is highly insulting to me, fly after lie. Then stop talking. You're being self-righteous and sanctimonious, so just get off your high horse. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You have met these people before. When Stephanie and her mother, Michelle, appeared on the show last year, they were at each other's throats about Stephanie's out-of-control drinking. Well, now they're back. But Michelle says, well, she says it's worse than ever before. Michelle claims Stephanie's binge drinking to the point of hallucination, has been to jail, and almost set the house on fire. Now, before we bring them out, here's a look at what happened last time they were here. My 32-year-old daughter, Stephanie, is completely out of control. My mom is bat crazy. She needs to wake up and smell the coffee. Stephanie was accepted to a number of very good colleges on the East Coast. All she wanted to do was party. She dropped out of college and never went back. When Stephanie drinks, she will drink until she passes out. Why are you here? It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon and what you're are you drunk. What doing? Just leave me the I've had two DUIs. I flipped a car over. I've had a third accident with the car that I took from my mom. I cannot take it anymore. I have no life anymore. I can't leave my house. I'm a prisoner in my house because she's almost set the house on fire. So how are you doing today? I am honestly shocked that she's still friggin' alive today. Here she is with her box of wine that she'll drink the whole box tonight. I'm sick of it. It's been going on for over 14 years. Why is she there? Well, I'm not gonna put her out in the street. She was with a homeless guy that brought her back to my house because he couldn't deal with her. Where does she get the money to buy two boxes of wine a day? Stupid me! She stays in my house. I paid for her food, her medical care, and all of her clothing. I'm just the idiot that pays the bills. Sure, there's issues with me drinking a box of wine a day, but my mom needs to take responsibility for her shortcomings. I just want to start by saying one thing. This is not the Michelle show. This is the Stephanie show. I thought it was the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> I drink because of you. Really? I put the bottle to your mouth and say, here, force it down my throat. Oh, this has had what effect on you? I feel like I've lost my myself. I feel like I'm a shell of a person. She constantly puts me down. You You're did drinking. Me? You're constantly. It's not to about my drinking. It's about in your life. It's about the root of why I drink. She can't go a day without okay. a man in her life. Okay. And I am broken stop, stop, because of you. Stop. You've been to rehab eight or nine times. Why are you choosing to live the life you're choosing now? I am fighting for the first time, but it's so hard when it's a vicious cycle with her. Now she may be part of your problem but you're your solution. I'm willing to help you. I'm willing to send you to a place called Hannah's house. I'm willing to do this if you give me 21 meetings in 21 days. I can do that. Deal? So, Stephanie did complete her 21 days of staying sober. So she headed off to Hannah's house, followed by a sober living facility after that. But ever since Mom Michelle moved to Texas to be with Stephanie, it has been a complete disaster. Take a look at how this mother and daughter duo are getting along now. I was so very grateful that Dr. Phil was so kind enough to offer Hannah's house to Stephanie. 
I visited Stephanie during family week and I was amazed by the progress she made. I saw my daughter, my real daughter, for the first time in over 15 years. Hannah's house was so incredible and I owe it to Dr. Phil. After completing 90 days at Hannah's house, Stephanie left to go live at a sober house. Sober living house was a nightmare. It was dirty, it was loud, the girls were rude. It was like a sorority house, and I'm sorry, but I'm too old for that. I hated it so much that I ended up checking into a hotel. I was so upset and concerned about Stephanie. I packed up my belongings, I left the East Coast, and I just moved to Texas. In two days, I drove 1,800 miles. My mom and I then moved into an apartment that she had rented. Things just quickly fell apart. She was back to drinking a box of wine a day. Steph, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Are you drinking already? Go away! Drinking all night, falling down, and just... It was a complete horror show. My mom thought I was drinking a lot, but she tends to exaggerate a lot. It was just a glass of wine here and there just to take the edge off. Who, whoever cries at a concert because they can't have a beer, tell me you didn't do that. Did you not cry at that concert? We stop? Did, right? Stop. One night, she urinated all over the bathroom floor, and on a separate night, she defecated in her bed. She almost set the house on fire because she passed out. There was no fire. My mom is exaggerating. Stephanie also started bringing random men home to the house, which scared me to death. And of course, my mom never approves of anyone I date. About a month ago, a man that Stephanie had been dating regularly called me up and said, I need to come and get her. Stephanie was completely hallucinating and talking to people that weren't there. I took her straight to the emergency room. And then she threatened to harm herself, so the hospital transported her to a mental health facility for seven days. I thought I had seen it all, but boy, was I wrong. As both Stephanie and Michelle were getting ready to come back to the show for more help, Stephanie suddenly got arrested and wound up in jail for a week. Here's what happened. About a week ago, Stephanie walked in the door with three boxes of wine. I confronted Stephanie as soon as she walked in the door, and things just spiraled out of control. She ripped the wine out of my hands and pushed me against the wall. She came running at me from across the room, tackled me to the ground. She had got me down on the ground and started kicking at me, spitting at me, cursing at me, wishing I was dead. I grabbed the phone and called 911. The police showed up. I was arrested for assault. I was handcuffed and I was taken to county jail. Jail in Texas is very different than the jail that I've been to on the East Coast. It was the worst six days of my life. They took all my clothes because they thought I was a threat to myself. I was in isolation. The food was horrible. I ate bread for six days. The corrections officers were rude and mean, and I was not getting any of my medications. I also had a seizure and received no medical attention. I feel at this point I'm completely out of options and I don't know what to do anymore. When my mom came to pick me up, she looked at me and said, you're welcome, aren't you thankful that I got you out? I just stared at her. I told her if you weren't such a drama queen and had to call 911, I wouldn't have ended up in jail in the first place. Tell me why you think we're back here again. Because she has destroyed me. Are you serious? She's a pathological liar. You're a pathological liar. You are crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. Dang. I drink because of you. Another great success story from Dr. Phil. <laughs> I was fine until you came to Texas. Didn't you say, well, I have taken your advice. I have. I have stopped yelling. I have stopped screaming. I have stopped arguing. I have stopped accusing. And I have stopped involving myself in my daughter's business. This is true. You two are yelling exactly the way you were the first time you were here. I do want to thank you because you did give me the tools and I went home and I went to work. I did the 21 Al-Anon meetings. I went to two anger management classes. 
and I have worked really hard to change, and I still am working really hard to change. So you have more work to do. I, I think every day people have to work on themselves. Here's what you said. You said that since you were last here, you went to anger management classes, <clears throat> true? Yes, sir, twice. Okay, that you control your temper, true? I do control my temper. I do. <laughs> that you listen more and talk less. Yes. <laughs> that you refuse to buy your daughter Don't alcohol. Don't you dare laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at what you're saying. Yes. That you, you refuse to buy your daughter alcohol. I have not, yes. Except twice in the last 24 hours. Once. Okay, you refuse to give your daughter spending money. I don't give her spending money. That you no longer blame yourself. I don't blame myself. That you have moving on with your life without your daughter. But you did pull up stakes on the East Coast and move to Texas and move her into your house? The original plan was... Well, that's a yes or yeah, no yes, question. Yes, it is yes. Okay. And you're making plans to disappear off the grid? Um, yeah, I am. W when? Um, as soon as I can get rid of her. I set up a plan for her to go 21 days sober, then go into Hannah's house, then go into sober living, and then you decided you knew better and moved from East Coast to Texas and moved her into an apartment with you. No, I... I, I... But she's my family. I didn't want to oh, live. Oh, okay. Just so, I was, oh, you, so you have a reason that you blew off my plan and instituted yours. I, I did. I, 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 How's honestly, that working for you? It, it's awful. It's worse now okay, than Michelle ever. Okay, Michelle says she has calmed down and does not provoke Stephanie, but there is something I want to play for them when we come back. Here you are, 10 months later, and your statement is, so I put the bottle to your mouth and make you drink. Things have gotten so much worse in the short amount of time. When you injected yourself back into her life. And later... I don't know what happened. I was doing so well. You left and you started drinking again. And I'm not to blame. I'm not taking blame for any of this. Monday. She keyed her boyfriend's car. I think I care. I don't care anymore. Got a restraining order. Are you afraid of him? Yes. But she keeps coming back to him. Your daughter and I had sex every day, like yesterday, like this morning, like all the time. Oh, my God. You sexually assaulted her. I did not sexually assault her. You look my wife in the eyes and use your fingers to illustrate that you've had our daughter. Then on Wednesday... Collier was 11 when he heard his mom being murdered by his own father. I heard a thud. A search for answers. He had a mistress. I did not kill Noreen. This is a psychopath. Wednesday. I feel like in the last couple months, my mom has been more controlling than she ever was before. I'm watching her like a hawk because if I don't, she's going to completely go off the rails. My mom is still going through my mail, still going through my phone, going through my email. She feels like she has to control everything. She lies, she manipulates, she just has to wedge her way into every aspect of my life. It just makes me want to drink even more. Stephanie thinks I may be controlling, but it's either that or I'm going to be planning her funeral. When Michelle last appeared on the show, she claimed her daughter Stephanie went from an A student in college to an alcoholic. Now, I told Michelle Stop yelling at her daughter and start listening. And Michelle says she took my advice after she left. But Stephanie says that's not true, as her mother has called her a whore and a waste of life. I put the bottle to your mouth and make you drink. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I mean, you do this every day. I like. Yeah. I'm not putting you down. You're an alcoholic and you need help. You had plenty of chances in rehab to get the help. You chose to throw it away and drink when you got out. So, and you don't go to AA. You don't do anything besides lying. AA does not work okay. for me. That's right. You're so special, but it works for everybody yeah, else. No, you're not. You just no, don't. No, I'm your child. You should You know what? I got better things to do. Leave me alone. I'm watching the Yankees. I don't need your drunken nuttiness to upset me. Yeah, you will be, though. It's early. And you probably will be tomorrow, because I'm guaranteed you probably lost your job. No, I did not lose my job. Then move.
Just please move out. Please leave. This is my house. doing anything then why did you come back here no one invited you back here good leave leave and don't come back because i'm changing the locks i feel so sorry for that dog okay now i want to ask the two of you let, let's just break this down here Okay, here's how this starts. I put the bottle to your mouth and make you drink. Okay, I put the bottle to your mouth and make you drink. Okay, what, what's your point in, in making that? I mean, it's clearly it's sarcastic, right? Yes, it is. It's because she's always constantly okay, blaming me what for you, everything. What do you expect the result of that to be? When you say that, what do you expect the reaction to be? I expect her to actually realize that I don't put the bottle okay, to her so mouth. Okay, so when you say that, I put the bottle to your mouth and make you drink. You expect her to come in and say, gee, mom, you're really right about that. This is a sarcastic comment that you've made, right? Yes. When okay. you were here first, yes. before you got all of this help and, yeah. and made the changes, here's what you said the last time you were here. I drink because of you. Really? I put the bottle to your mouth and say, here, force it down my throat. Okay. Is that exactly what you said the last yes. time you were here? Yes, because... And so now after all of this... You're saying exactly the same thing again. Because she makes me do it. Here you are, 10 months later, having gone through 21 days of sobriety, 90 days at, at Hannah's house, going into sober house. You've gone through anger management. All of this has happened, and your statement is, so I put the bottle to your mouth and make you drink. Things have gotten so much worse in the short amount of time from July till now. That when you moved from yes, East Coast to Texas. Yes, when I left New Jersey. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, when you injected yourself back into her life. I did not inject myself back into her life. She left the sober living house and was living in a hotel and drinking again. What I'm pointing out is, okay, you came to me for help. I set up a program that she was in. It's not success only, but she was doing as well as she has ever done. And so she decides she's going to bail from sober living, and you come and give her a soft place to fall. And that means she doesn't have to return to sober living. She doesn't have to come back to the resources that have helped her in the past because she now has an alternative, you. And it just keeps on. I'm not putting you down. You're an alcoholic and you need help. You had plenty of chances in rehab to get the help. You had plenty of chances and you blew it, bitch. I didn't call her a bitch. You call her whore, waste of life, drunk, and wish you had gotten an abortion. Uh, you know, I don't ask myself why these people are off in the ditch. I ask myself, why not? How could there be any other possible outcome? We'll be right back. Listen, I'll give you a few minutes to point out what a worthless bitch she is in a minute, okay? Oh, I'm not saying okay. she's a worthless bitch. You're, no, yes, you are, actually. And do not insult my intelligence. And later... She's worse. No, she's not. She's she tried more... tried to kill me. I'm glad you all think this and, is funny. And they're laughing at the ridiculousness of your inability to see that you and your daughter are so alive. Your mother says that she hasn't purchased you alcohol. That's not true, is it? She bought you alcohol on the flight, right? I didn't pay for that alcohol. Then bought a bottle of wine uh, so you could drink that at the hotel. Michelle, Stephanie got a bottle of wine tonight instead of going to the bar because it's cheaper uh, and sent the, the picture of the wine. Our staff said, well, how did she pay for it? Michelle says, well, we went to the market to get some things for breakfast in the morning because room service doesn't start till we leave. So I got stuck with the bill because I needed to use my card. Uh, I'm an idiot, but that is the first time since rehab I've done it. Not true. No, it is true. You decided to 
leave sober living because it was beneath you. That's not You said true. it was dirty, it was like a sorority house, it was loud. I wasn't sleeping. And for me, that's the first thing to go. And that's what causes me to start drinking. Right. We have you in front of the uh, commode at 3 in the afternoon down on your knees and her yelling over your shoulder, are you drunk already? It's 3 in the afternoon. What were you doing then? Probably drinking. Instead of being at the sober living facility? Yeah. Or, Why? At, a, or at a meeting. Why? I don't know. Listen, I'll give you a few minutes to point out what a worthless bitch she is in a minute, okay? Oh, I'm not saying okay. she's a worthless bitch. Yeah, no, yes, you are, actually. And do not insult my intelligence by I'm, trying to I'm think not. that I don't understand how derogating your comments are when you make them. I am not a fool. <laughs> I am not a fool. I don't know what happened. I was doing so well. And you left. And I left, and I didn't want to leave. But you did. I did. You were I sober. I shouldn't have left. I was sober. Let's take a look at the timeline. April 4th to July 4th, you stay at Hannah's house. You didn't go through the motions. You actually immersed yourself in the program. Your mother even said that when she came to see you, she had her daughter back for the first time, right? Yes, sir. Then, from the 5th to the 19th, you're at the sober living facility. So you're flying high here. You're, you're, you've worked hard, and you've earned what you have. Then, from the 19th to the 26th, you leave and stay at a hotel. She leaves the hotel, and she stays with well, you. Well, she was thrown out of the hotel. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. You've driven 1,800 miles in two days, gotten an apartment, and she moves in with you. Correct. And you say she smells of alcohol. Correct. Okay. So she's on my program up here. Then she leaves and starts going downhill. You move to town. Now we're into August. She starts bringing random men home, How is that you. my fault? Would she bring those men to your house if you were 1,800 miles away? No. Okay, just check it. All right. <laughs> then end of August, she gets a job at a golf course around alcohol. Not the best idea. Then September, you guys start to argue again. Then on the 26th, you say that you take her to the hospital for a seven-day hold because she's hallucinating and showing erratic behavior because of drinking. Drinking and a combination of the medications that she's been on. Right. I have bipolar disorder. It was a medication problem. It you say not. that she's yes, it was. that Stephanie almost starts a fire in the house. She says no. You say yes. Michelle takes Stephanie to the hospital two day hold for hallucinating and, and uh, erratic behavior. She calls nine. You call nine one one. She goes to jail for seven days. You complain they're not as nice as the jails in New Jersey. You're fired from the golf course for missing work. You say you quit. But it just seems to me that when you're doing what we plan, you're up here, you go on your own program, and then you and your mother get working together, and then you're just headed right downhill. So I guess I'm to blame. All I've tried to do is to keep my daughter alive and do the best that I could to try to help her. And then she starts blaming me for everything. And I'm not to blame. I'm not taking blame for any of this. This is not my fault why she drinks. And regardless of what she thinks, I love her. I'm the only one left in her life that is still trying to keep her alive. Oh, really? What am I doing? Well, besides you. <laughs> Next, Michelle says that she wants her daughter to get help and grow up. So what's the definition of help? We'll talk about that after the break. She took money from me. She took money from me since we've been here. As I'm going through my wallet right here, I realize that I'm missing probably about $40, which Stephanie must have taken out. Stephanie, did you take money from your mom since you've been here in L.A.? No. 
well, uh, I'm missing $40, so then I must be really stupid and not know how to count. You gave me $20 and so you I could go downstairs. No, I didn't. Okay, you're, no, I didn't. you're a liar. Okay, I'm the liar, but I'm not the one who's got the police record. I'm the one who goes to work and puts a roof over your head, food on the table, clothes on your back, but I'm a liar. So all of this is a lie. You're not an alcoholic. I find it highly insulting when you treat me like a piece of trash. Last night, my mom gave me money to go downstairs and have a drink at the bar. I don't know if she has amnesia or she just doesn't want to admit it on camera. I'm assuming she doesn't want to admit it on camera. Okay, what is it she doesn't want to admit on camera? The fact that she gave me money to go downstairs to the hotel bar. I agree that's absolutely beyond absurd, but what's your point? My point is she's a pathological liar. Oh, my God. I don't understand why she has to lie about it. I am not a pathological liar, you are. It's not helping the situation. So why do you go downstairs and buy alcohol? Because I'm an alcoholic. Uh-huh. And I have bipolar disorder and I can't seem to get it under control. Uh-huh. What do you think your mother wants for you? I know that she wants the best for me. I know that she wants me to be well. Mm -hmm. And I know that at the end of the day, she loves me. Yeah. I know that. Mm -hmm. And why are you so combative with her? Because she, I think I'm still mad. I'm mad at all the things that she's done. Mm -hmm. I'm mad at the way that I had to grow up. Oh, my God. I'm mad at her for breaking up my last relationship. I did not break up your last relationship. Can we just please stop that? Is this that? the part where you listen more and talk less? I'm not, Dr. Phil, go, I don't go, appreciate go, go. being accused of things that are not true. It is highly insulting to me for her to sit there and lie after lie after lie when I did nothing wrong. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Okay, then stop talking. <laughs> you say you don't go to AA meetings because there aren't any around your house. Well, there aren't, and I don't drive. And that's there my aren't. own fault. Okay, look, here's where you live, and the orange spots are AA meetings. Okay. Those are within five miles of your house. At least 11 AA meetings meetings occurring within five miles of your house. Some of them, you can throw a rock and break out the window. This map shows the total number of AA locations in all of Austin. There are 104 of them. I mean, so if you're working somewhere in Austin, you can't sling a cat and not hit an AA meeting <laughs> in Austin, Texas. So don't tell me there aren't AA meetings in Austin, Texas. They're all over the place. But she said AA doesn't work for her. Okay, and your point is, what, 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 in because what I'm, way I'm are you contributing? To, I'm, I'm in what way are you contributing I'm to the to conversation here? Where I've shown her all these meetings and shown her where they're at, and she still says AA doesn't work for her. So how, mm -hmm. how do you make somebody go to something that they don't want to go to? Okay, so you're asking a question. Yes. It, it, that, that statement was really a question in disguise. Yes, I guess. Okay, I'm starting to understand. Sorry. Okay, so what went wrong for Stephanie after the last time she was here? And that's what we're going to talk about after the break. I wonder if there's something wrong with Stephanie that triggers her to make her drink. Why do you keep her in your life? Why, because why? she's my mother. I love her. No, you don't. If you, you don't even love yourself. Someone that loves themselves doesn't drink themselves into a coma where they can't hold the job down, falling down the stairs. You're violent. Oh my gosh. Really, she needs to be locked up in a mental institution. My mom causes me major anxiety and she makes me feel really bad about myself. My mom is definitely a major trigger of why I drink. That is not true. Let's talk about the solutions here. Okay? Because you know what's missing here? What's missing here, which is missing 
in most circumstances, in my opinion, is just good old plain common sense. There's just not enough <laughs> common sense. Okay? There's just not enough common sense going on here. And you guys are so close to it that you don't see it. So let me tell the two of you what I think is going on here. And what I'm going to tell you is just common sense. Okay, first off, you two are so much alike. No, we're not. I, I feel like I should move my chair because lightning is going to strike you. <laughs> you two are so much alike. Uh, you don't think that your daughter is like you? No, I don't. No. I think that, yes, you're right in the fact that, you know, we feed off each other in a combative way. But it's only mm. because of the drinking and the pills and the men that I have become this way. I never used to be like this. It's well, not I didn't know you in grade school. I just know you now. <laughs> I'm and, glad you all think this and, is funny. And it, they're laughing at the ridiculousness of your inability to see that you and your daughter are so alike. And, and don't you dare insult them. By, yes, you're trying to because you're being self-righteous and sanctimonious. So just get off your high horse. I am not on a high horse. Yes, you are. No, not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You need to recognize that the two of you are just, you, you, you're entrenched in a pattern. You have a learned relationship pattern. She triggers you, you trigger her. Listen to what I'm telling you now, because commonsensically, you need to recognize you're this close to turning a big corner in, the, in your life. You're really this close. So don't blow it now. Don't blow it now. Have common sense. You don't think she's any different than when she was here last time. She truly is. She's worse, I think. No, she's not. She's she tried more to kill me. What? She tried to set the house on fire. You know what you need to do? You need to go find somebody that you have faith in. I have faith in you. That's why I came to you. Well, then you need to listen to what I'm telling you. And if it won't withstand challenge, then reject it by all means. I am not the repository of all knowledge. I don't have all the answers in the universe, I... but I do have the answers to this. Okay. And you need to listen to what I'm saying because I'm telling you, you actually have done work. You actually have done work. The two of you have actually done work. You don't seem to be able to get out of your own way very well, but you actually have both done work and have actually both made progress. I believe at this point in our toxic relationship that we need to separate. You have to hit your bottom. I am at my bottom. You made a big mistake when you came 1,800 miles in two days to give your daughter an escape route from a return to health. She was on a path to health. You gave her an exit ramp. You were well-intended. You were well-intended, but you gave her an exit ramp. That's what we call enabling. Had you not done that, she might have said, well, I'm screwed. I need to get myself sober and go back to sober living. But <clears throat> I've been doing this 45 years. That's usually what happens unless somebody comes in and gives them an alternative. You came in and gave her an alternative. You were well-intended. You don't want to see your daughter under a bridge getting raped and killed. You came and saved her. And it put her back to where she was before she went into Hannah's house seemingly but not really because she did learn a lot while she was there and there's what we call savings there was a lot of savings in her what she learned she doesn't go back and start at zero 
She really learned a lot. She saved a lot. She's further down the road than where she was. further down the road than where you were because you understand what I'm telling you. You're wondering if I understand what you're telling me, which is, it's easy for you to say, Dr. Phil, it's not your daughter. If it was you, it would be a lot harder for you to do it than it is for you to say it, Buster. And that's exactly right. That's why you need to talk to somebody that's not emotionally invested in it. I believe at this point and juncture in our toxic relationship, that we need to separate for a very long time. Uh, I don't think us living together, I don't think my enabling her, I think she needs to just be on her own and stand on her own two feet. Absolutely, and, 100%. And the last thing you said to me, <clears throat> the last thing you said to me on the last show was, Michelle, it may not be pretty what happens on the other side, but you have to, cross that line yeah. and I'm ready today to cross that line because I feel that and I learned something over this last couple of weeks and thinking back to your and my conversation and listening to your advice that I have been around some form of addiction my whole life without realizing it as a child and then into adulthood now while I am not an addict of my own, I have lived with someone who has had addiction. So I feel almost like I have addict behavior. I've learned through Al-Anon, I do um, have addict behavior. You do? I do, I, and I realize that. You have to hit your bottom in order to go up. I am at my bottom. Well, let me answer your question. Let me stop you to answer your question. Yes, sir. Yes, you do need to separate. That doesn't mean abandon. It's a big difference between giving space and abandoning. You don't need to abandon your daughter. There is a constructive way for you to step back and still love and support your daughter's good behaviors but not be enmeshed in her life. You are so entrenched into a, this combat reactive relationship with her that you simply can't interact right now without defaulting to that behavior. And so I do want you to give yourself permission to step back, but not abandon her. In fact, you can have some relationship with her, but it needs to be monitored and filtered through a professional. And so we're gonna talk about that. Now, I've gotta take a break. Stephanie had a lot to say about the sober living facility. Well, we're gonna talk to those people. We'll be right back. Please welcome the founder and chief clinical officer of Omega Recovery, Dr. Nicholas Carderas and Clinical Director Julia Thompson, as well as Executive Director Michael Smeltzer of Bridgeway Sober Living. Now, Dr. Carderas worked with Stephanie when she was in one of his facilities, the Bridgeway Silver Lining Sober Living Facility in Austin, Texas. So, uh, Dr. Carderas, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Sure, thank uh, you, Dr. Phil. Now, 
you guys have been listening to what's been going on here, and my basic position here is that if you were still in that sober living facility, you would still be sober. You would be sober, you would have a job, you would probably be helping others, you would be moving along in a way on a trajectory that you have probably never been on, but you can't do that when you leave. These people care about you. These people will work with you if you're sober. You can't be in a sober living facility if you're not sober. It's just that simple. So, when we finish here, I, I want you to meet with Anthony Haskins. Stand up, Anthony. Uh, he's our resource director, and get you on the phone with with these three here, uh, and and talk about how we can make this work, and and keep you moving along the way you need to do. Are you willing to do that? Yes. And we will get you the, the specific help you do. Let's find out. Are you bipolar or are you not? Let's find out where you are biochemically. But you've got to manage this medication. Yeah. Uh, and Dr. Carderis, will you join after the show with Anthony and, and, and talk about what needs to happen here, the three of you, and talk about a plan where we can get back where we need to be? I would like nothing more than to help Stephanie move forward in her life. Absolutely. All right. All right. And, and we will get her back on track, but you need... You need to take a step back. I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, fair enough. And, and do not go away I mean, thinking... I'm not leaving her I life. Don't, I'm don't go away thinking going, I'm abandoning my daughter. I'm not going to abandon my daughter. Turn this over to the people that are trained to do it. And we will guide you on when and how to rebuild this relationship. And it will, it will begin with boundaries a step at a time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to founder and chief clinical director of Omega Recovery, Dr. Nicholas Carderis, and their clinical director, Julia Thompson, as well as executive director, Michael Smeltzer, of Bridgeway Sober Living. We will see you guys next time.